Hey everybody, I'm Jack Roberts with Heavy Duty Trucking. I'm here with my old friend Mario Sanchez Lara. How are you, sir? How are you, Jack? We're, it's so great to see you again. It's great to be here. We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the TMC annual meeting, and we are in the very impressive Cummins booth. The, the X15, a lot of interest in it. New, the, the new helm platform, very adaptable for fleets, solid engine technology, and you pretty much figure out what kind of fuel you want to burn. But here, this is the diesel engine. This is the diesel flavor, and you know, Different to what we always do, we introduce first the natural ga gas version, and now it's the diesel. And this is the next generation X15, and the current product has been in the market for 30 years. So over the last 30 years, we figured out how to make it work, but we always were doing a list of things that we like to try, or things that didn't work, and we were just, and eventually about seven years ago, we said, you can put a new platform, global platform, that gives us the flexibility for fuels. And it was a completely new design with everything we know, everything we have learned, and it's just right here. I flew into uh, Columbus last year. I oh. got a pre-brief on the engine. I know there are a lot of really cool features here, some yeah. super interesting stuff on the exhaust treatment side of things. You yes. guys are really doing some innovative stuff. So why don't you give us a little tour and tell, tell the fleet guys out there what they need to know about the 27. Well, let's just start here at the front because one of the things that you're gonna notice is that the only thing you see at the front of the engine is pulleys. And of course, we don't have the belts on it for aesthetic reasons. But all the gear train, all the gear-driven accessories are now mounted in the back. The reason we did that is because it helps us to balance the dynamic loads of the engine, but also because we wanted to create a space up front to add this device, which is an alternator that is 48 volts. 48. And that alternator is solely dedicated to help us produce electricity to run heaters that are going to help us to maintain the exhaust gas temperatures in the sweet spot for soot oxidation and for NOx conversion. Um, so we needed the real state, we made that space there, and it's electronically controlled. It's in the loop with the J1939 and our, our module and the control unit for that talk each other and determine we need to heat up the exhaust gases, let's run the alternator and get the heaters going for the time we need. We don't run it all the time. Yeah. This is not a constant parasitic load. Okay. It's, it's a, a small parasitic load because it's there with a belt, but we, it varies depending on what we need. Okay, interesting. And, and that was important because it, it, it's fuel economy. We yeah. just, right? So, so that's from the front. If we come to the hot side of the engine, we continue with EGR, and with our variable geometry turbo. But in this engine, we have really thought a lot about the right size of EGR cooler, the right placement of things for heat transfer, heat dissipation, and also for accessibility for the drivers. We have a new oil cartridge filter. We have a new water pump that you can see is actually modular. We can re take the water pump and replace it without having to take the front engine apart. Oh wow. That was a big change. Yeah. Then just tuck it right there towards the end of the engine, you're gonna see a crankcase ventilation filter that is centrifugal. Right? So we are really cr close crankcase ventilation. We just run it through there, we separate the moist and we reintroduce the gas in the engine and we catch the moist and put it back into the old pan. The only thing I want to point out because we purposely don't have the starter in this engine is we wanted to show that area because that really shows the design principle we have with this engine, which was let's make it lighter, but let's make sure it's strong to continue to deliver the same performance. So what we have, what you can see there is a sculpt block design. Basically, we did a lot of, a lot of analysis that design to determine where do we need the material and where we didn't. Give us the light, the, the, the weight savings, but also give us the strength where we need it. And it's carry on all the way through the old pan. You see how is this almost like muscles, right? It's almost like just structure. And, and that's important because it's a smaller, it's lighter, but it's still capable to do 600 horsepower, 2050 foot panel torque. Wow, 600 horsepower engine, amazing. Yeah, and, and it's the same size of other 13 liters. Wow. Right, so now coming up to the most important part, sorry, Bethany, thank you. Now this is where a lot of the innovation has happened. We've learned so much about exhaust yes. after treatment systems over the years, and yeah. you guys were able to apply that knowledge, and what you've come up with is a 
much simpler, much more efficient, lighter, smaller package, pretty much anything you could ask for in an exhaust treatment after system now, right? Yeah, I mean, you remember 2007 when we first came up with the DPFs and then 2010 SCR. This is really the latest and greatest. And, and what we have learned a lot is about the, 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 the chemistry, the wash coats that we have, the media, that really works at a broader temperature range. But even with that, the challenge has always been, can we keep the exhaust gases hot enough to give us the most conversion, the, the best efficiency in oxidation of soot and NOx conversion? And uh, it has always been the challenge, do we help the after treatment system with the engine? Do we do things with the engine to produce heat? And we've been doing it for 15 years. So, but so just, to re just to kind of set the stage, these, the current systems are very efficient when the engine is at operating temperature. Correct. The problem now is when the truck is cold and you just start it up, that's when the bulk of the emissions and the pollution happens. And you guys have come up with a pretty cool way to solve that problem, Exactly. Right? And that is the heaters and the alternator that we talk about working in concert and helping us to bring up the temperature up and keep it there during that period where the engine is maybe not working as hard, right? But once the engine is getting up to work and the load is there and the temperatures are there, the alternator is turned off, the heaters are turned off, and we let it run. There is another interesting scenario, for example, if you're going downhill, engine brake. At that point, the engine was probably hot because it climbed, and this is hot. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we start going down, the engine brake is actually cooling the whole thing. I didn't know that. But wow. The, and it's that, it's, the, yeah, it's so that's that a narrow yeah. margin. Yeah, so that's a thermal wow. cycle that we go through it and in the emissions matters. So what we do now, we turn this on. And the beauty of it is the alternator is giving us another 15 horsepower of braking capability because we put in load on the engine, right? <laughs> At the same time that maintaining the, the, the exhaust temperature is hot. So it really gives us a lot of flexibility and, and let the engine run where the engine is more efficient. And I also know from my visit to Columbus, this is much easier to service now, isn't it? Yes. Well, we have, for, uh, since the very beginning, we have always said we need modular design that we can give us the flexibility for installation and give us the ability to take things apart and making it very serviceable. And we continue with that. The DPF is, 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 is slightly bigger because, and, and mostly what we wanted to do is reduce back pressure because that's efficiency. And the SER catalyst, instead of being one, is two. You can see them is mounted there. And that is giving us also the better space velocity of the exhaust gas going through the SCR without having to put a big one, right? And the two help us to achieve the, the objective, but also at a lower back pressure to keep the engine efficient. So there will be installations where you, you don't see here the pipe that will come from the exit of the DPF into the inlet of the SCR catalyst because we wanted people to see. But there will be installations where the DPF is closed and the SCR is probably mounted behind the cab vertical especially in vocational trucks, where you don't have necessarily the space on the front. So the modular design gives us that flexibility. A lot of people come and say, how much do you have?